Hello, and welcome to the Law Deals Podcast, where we discuss law firm succession plans, profitable law partnerships, and law firm purchases and sales. I'm your host, Ed Alexander. I've practiced transactional business law for 30 years, have my own practice, Alexander Business Law, and I'm a principal with Fitzgibbon Alexander, a business intermediary firm. We're on a mission to make sales of law firms commonplace so you can enjoy your practice and your life. Hello and welcome to the Law Deals Podcast. In this episode, we're talking about the three types of law firms and how each differs from a sale or succession standpoint. By knowing what type of firm you'll have, you'll be able to successfully plan for and complete your exit. There are three types of law firms and only three types of law firms. The process firm, the relationship firm, and the brain surgery firm. So process firms are typically firms that have a regular component to it. So think consumer bankruptcy, general criminal defense, garden variety, car accident, PI, uncontested uh, divorce, family law. These are uh, typically areas of the law where the process is the key. There aren't a lot of crucial legal issues. It's more about working through the process. And so you find in these, there is a little bit lower margin because pricing ends up being an issue. It's really a volume oriented arrangement rather than a margin oriented relationship. As a result, these firms are typically dependent on management, good management itself, good marketing and advertising systems, and then, of course, excellent financial statements. The good news about these firms is that if they are functioning at a uh, appropriate level in terms of both profitability, revenue, and then cost basis, they are absolutely readily saleable and scalable. And the nice part about them is that they usually have what we call enterprise uh, goodwill. So the goodwill, the relationship between the client or the referral source and the firm is not dependent on the owner. Rather, it's dependent on the way the firm goes about its business. An interesting point to note here, you know, lawyers are sometimes insulted when their firm is identified as a process firm. And really, this is not a characterization of the work or the skill involved. In fact, there is significant skill involved because of the management aspect of this and the high case volume of this. It just has to do with the nature of the area of law and the overall competition. The next firm is a relationship firm. These firms are typically based on the relationship of the producer, so whether that is a partner or the firm owner or maybe a senior associate, but the relationship between the producer and the client. And so you'd find this in corporate litigation. You'd find it in transactional work, higher net worth, estate planning, and elder law. The relationship firms have really good margin. So typically margin should be in the 30 to 40% range, right? And they are firms that grow over a period of time. So they typically don't spend a bunch on advertising. They're growing based on their relationship with the community. And so a key sellability issues or transfer exit issues, having that relationship, having what I call a tribe, which is a group of people who have a good feeling towards a firm with whom the firm communicates on a regular basis. So uh, that, you know, maybe it's a e-newsletter list, uh, maybe it's a print newsletter list, something like that, but there's ongoing communication. Another issue is a niche. We don't want this firm to be too broad. Narrow is good when it comes to a relationship firm because then the community can know you for doing a particular thing. And by the way, that community includes other lawyers making referrals to you. And then good intake and production processes so that a client satisfaction is maintained. Uh, lawyer time is directed to the highest and best use for that particular lawyer. And so uh, making sure that uh, we have a high level of efficiency. And then having an in-place team. In-place team is very important. 
in this area because oftentimes there's not a lot of written systems with this area. So the saleability is good as long as the owner is willing to do a goodwill transfer. And that typically takes time. It means that the owner often will be of counsel to the buyer's firm for an extended period of time. And that there there literally has to be face-to-face -face meetings, whether that's over lunch or in the office, that type of thing. But face-to-face -face meetings around a transfer of that goodwill so that the seller can introduce the buyer and uh, see that there's a relationship and a trust there. They're very important. So the third type of firm is the brain surgery firm. This is the firm that does work, what I would call at the farm type matters, right? Really important matters. And so this type of firm is going to be well known throughout maybe the community, maybe the area as the go-to firm for this type of matter. Now, I think it's important to note here that this is not the same thing as having a niche, right? Having a niche and being known as doing the work for that niche does not mean that you have a brain surgery firm. You probably have a relationship firm. The brain surgery firm is working on matters that are truly the high, highest of high end. Again, bet the farm type matters. Now, the key issue with brain surgery firms is you'll often find they have roller coaster revenue. They work on big cases with significant fees, but in between, there are a lot of downtimes especially if the marketing machine isn't operating during the time when the big case is going on. These might be smaller firms with smaller teams. Um, the real sellability issue here is that the brain surgeon lawyer must join the acquiring firm because there has to be a transfer of goodwill. The community, not just the referral sources, not just the clients, has to see that the buyer is the anointed successor to the brain surgeon lawyer, right? So the community, not just the clients, have to see that the buyer is the successor to the brain surgeon lawyer. And this can take years for this to happen. Therefore, it's absolutely imperative that a brain surgery firm begin this process earlier rather than later. And as we talked about in the episode on uh, the four ways to exit your firm, of all the ways, the brain surgery firm is really almost always going to be an internal transfer. It is the least saleable from an outside perspective because of the position of the brain surgeon lawyer. Okay, so if you have more questions about your law firm succession or sale, I have a resource for you. It's called The Guide to Selling Your Florida Law Practice. I wrote this book to show lawyers how to figure out how much their firms are worth and how to get them sold so they can enjoy their lives. To get it, all you have to do is go to ExitMyLawPractice.com. It's a free download, and uh, just put your email address, and we will send you the book. It's an ebook, and just to re reiterate, that's ExitMyLawPractice.com. I would love any feedback you had on it. And of course, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Thanks for listening. listening.